Let's talk about how to counter the side effects of chemotherapy. Here's the problem with chemotherapy. It creates a toxic effect in the entire body. The other problem with chemotherapy is that, yes, it kills cancer, but it never kills 100%. There's always a small amount left. The cancer cells that are not killed actually become stronger. So this is like the biggest problem with oncologists dealing with the resistance after the first round of chemotherapy. The cancer comes back with a vengeance. So you need stronger chemotherapy, you need additional drugs, because now the cancer is very resistant. Last year, 20 million people worldwide got cancer. 9.7 million of them died. The most common cancer is lung cancer, followed by colorectal cancer. So whether you have cancer or not, you may end up having a friend or loved one that has cancer, and you can share this information. Certain phytonutrients have protective effects against cancer. So I evaluated a lot of them, and I'm going to put the links down below, but there are five that I wanted to bring up and talk about because these five, they have chemo preventative factors. Okay, that's a little bit different than chemo protective factors. Chemo preventative factors actually do things to prevent cancer from happening in the first place and prevent needing chemotherapy. So when that pathway gets triggered or those genes, you are protected from oxidative stress, inflammation, free radical damage, you get better detoxification. And all five of the phytonutrients I'm going to mention have that effect as well. So what are they? Number one, sulforaphane. That's in broccoli sprouts. So you can also do adult broccoli, but when you do the broccoli sprouts, it's like 20 to 50 times more concentrated. And it's in other cruciferous vegetables as well. Number two, resveratrol. Now that's a common phytonutrient that helps anti-aging as well, but it's powerful and potent um, phytonutrient that you can take if you're taking chemo as well. Next one on the list is quercetin. Okay, that's in onions, it's in a lot of other things. Then we get to the major compound in green tea, E-G-C-G. -G. And then the last one on the list is called allicin in garlic. Now, there's other things you can do too, which I'm going to get into next. One is cachexia. What is that? That is the wasting away of body tissue from certain diseases like cancer. Well, what's interesting about this is that over 50% of the people who have cancer die of this cachexia, not the cancer directly. And this problem can be greatly improved by taking magnesium. There's this huge connection between a magnesium deficiency and cachexia. So by taking magnesium, you can help uh, prevent or maybe even slow down this process. And now I'm going to talk about something even more interesting. And this is a, a trace mineral called selenium. Now, I recently learned about selenium in a whole different light from this book right here, What Really Causes AIDS by Harold D. Foster. Wow, fascinating book. I'm not going to talk about AIDS, but I want to talk about the relationship between selenium and the immune system. So what does AIDS stand for? Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. You're deficient in something very specific in your immune system, the T helper cell. If you don't already know this, the T helper cell is like the general of an army. The T helper cell coordinates and manages the defense mechanism, all the different immune cells and what they should do and what they shouldn't be doing. And this cell is dependent on selenium. Now, what's interesting is that they found a direct correlation between a deficiency of these T helper cells and AIDS. But even more of an association with AIDS is a deficiency in selenium. If you're deficient in selenium, you can't make this general of your army. It's it just like it's non-functional. And they also uh, found some fascinating data in areas of Africa where they have the highest rate of AIDS. They have the most deficient soils in selenium. The same thing in the U.S. as well. Areas of the country that are the most deficient in selenium, as far as the soils go, have the highest rate of AIDS. 
Now, there's a lot more to talk about that in another video, but I want to mention two other immune cells that are dependent on selenium. One is the natural killer cell. The other one is the cytotoxic cell. Which both of these have two jobs, to kill viruses and to kill cancer. They are both dependent on selenium. So if I had AIDS, I would be taking 400 micrograms of selenium every single day. If I had cancer, I would want to strengthen my immune system. And I would take at least 200 to 400 micrograms of selenium. Now, why would I take that? Because the chemo is destroying my immune system. That is one big problem. It may not lessen the side effects, but it may strengthen your defenses against cancer. All right, so I talked about the five phytonutrients. I talked about magnesium, selenium. What else is there? Intermittent fasting and prolonged fasting. I've done other videos on this topic. When you do intermittent fasting and especially prolonged fasting, you strengthen your immune system. There's a lot to talk about on that topic, but I'm gonna leave that for another video too. I'll put the link down below. You can watch that later. Next thing, exercise. Exercise can greatly reduce the side effects from chemo. Well, now, why would that help? Well, because exercise directly and powerfully strengthens your mitochondria. Cancer is a mitochondrial disease, so you must exercise on a regular basis, not just if you have cancer on chemo, but just to prevent cancer as well. Next thing, cold therapy. Cold therapy can also reduce the side effects from chemo and radiation therapy. Interesting. Next thing, vitamin D. Vitamin D is one of the most important vitamins to strengthen the immune system. If you had cancer, how much vitamin D should you take? Well, you should take a lot. You should take high doses of it. If you look at the normal amounts that most doctors want your vitamin D at, it's between 30 and 100 nanograms per milliliter of blood. You might want to increase that even more, at least 120 nanograms per milliliter. Now, some people are going to say, well, isn't there a toxic effect from vitamin D? I actually don't think there is. I think it's more of a cofactor deficiency more than a vitamin D toxicity. For more information on that topic, you should check out this video right here.